In today's Sharp Saturday video, we're gonna take a look at a really cool made in the USA knife from my friends at LT Wright Knives. Talking about their skeleton key. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for trustworthy information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me here on another Sharp Saturday. I was laughing because that's at the third take it took me to get that, that little line that I say every time down. So anyway, the folks at LT right now were kind enough to send me one of their skeleton key knives. And honestly, I reached out to them a few weeks ago, uh, asking if they'd be interested in participating in the Sharp Saturday series, because I'm really trying to focus on as, as much USA-made stuff as I can, in addition to some other stuff. And they said they would certainly be glad to do so. However, due to the COVID-19 um, stuff that's going on, they weren't able to get into their shop. So all they really had at this point in time to send me uh, that they had in stock was, was one of these skeleton keys, which is actually one that I'd asked them for. So there's a couple other ones probably going to be on the way sometime soon. But I thought this is just a really cool, very, very nice little neck knife, EDC style blade. It's got a lot of potential and, and the price is good on it. And it is, it is made by LT Right Knives. So it is, you know, it is rock solid. The quality is there. And if you have, aren't familiar with LT Right Knives, I um done a couple of reviews before on, on some of his knives, like when we were doing the gauntlet uh, thing a few years back, did a, several LT right knives. So I thought it'd be good to revisit him because they're just very, very well made, you know, handmade in the USA, handcrafted in the USA, just 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 very, very high quality stuff. So, so I'm rambling. Instead of that, why don't we take it down to the old stump top and get to doing some of that knife stuff? Okay, here we are at the old stump top with the LT right skeleton key. And just talk about the specs of this thing real quick. So it features a two and a three quarter inch sharpened edge and it's saber ground with a six and a half inch overall length and it's eighth inch thick D2 steel. It comes with a sandwich style Kydex sheath and you can, it's available with or without a little tech lock. This one came with the tech lock. So you can set this thing up to all sorts of configurations on your belt. So several different holes in the handle here. Uh, those are useful for both for lightening the blade and for uh, helping helping you give a, a little better grip and it, if you want to lash this thing on to make a spear or a longer longer blade for getting fruit down or whatever out of a tree then it gives you something to lash it to and if you decide you want to put some scales on it later you can do that also and i think they actually offer a, a version with scales on it already the price of this knife um, is 95 dollars with no tech lock and 110 dollars with a tech lock and it's available um, direct from LT Wright or from Blade HQ, which one of one of my favorite knife knife stores online. So you don't want to use the tech lock. It makes it this makes an excellent excellent neck knife. And it's got the little slide lock on here to keep it uh, retention very strong in the sheath. And you need to get it out. You just pop it up, and there you go. So um, pretty cool there. Now let's talk about the uh, couple things. If you can see, the handle is relieved around here, so it's, it's, it's nice and comfortable. It's not. There's no sharp edges here at all that I can feel on the handle. Um, got a nice little little notch rounded here actually to give you uh, some, some purchase for your thumb. And yet the uh, spine up here seems pretty sharp. Um, and then I wear a medium sized gloves. The handle is long enough for me to really get, get a hold of as they say. So I'm gonna guess the handle's what, three and a quarter inches about, about from here to there according to the two and three quarter sharpened edge and six and a half inch overall length, right? That should be, I'm sorry, it'd be three and three quarter inches, wouldn't it? Yes, it would three and three quarter inches. So don't do math on camera. So anyway, that being said, let's take a, a quick look at a couple of things and try some, some basic knife stuff with it. So first of all, I know this is uh, not a big old knife, but we're gonna do our standard knife test with it. So it's a three and three quarter inch cutting service. This is about an inch and a quarter inch piece of really really hard wood so we're going to do a little tiny because why not i don't want anybody saying i babied it because i like lt's knives which i do by the way but let's just see what happens we can baton this little thing here i mean you know if we're going to be silly we might man if we're going to be silly we might as well be silly you can see how hard this wood is it's not even wanting to bite in enough to hold it in place but let's just do it Like I'm worried about this thing messing up, right? It's just a piece of eighth inch thick steel that's not gonna hurt anything. This is a couple more. And, and in my experience, this wood that I'm batoning here is horrible for making feathers out of. 
And it's also pretty damp. It's been out in the weather now for, it rained really hard here a few days ago. Um, so anyway, that's fine. I think I'm gonna take some of this cedar that I had split out from another with another knife review and, and carve some feathers with it because I like cedar feathers, even though they're hard, harder to carve in many cases. But so this is saber grind knife and um I do like this the smell of cedar when it's burning too. So that's another reason I'm doing this because you know one of the next tests is gonna be how well this thing will strike old ferro rod. But I gotta be careful. I, I cut almost cut the end of my finger off here with my Emerson folding knife a few days ago, and it's still kind of sore. So I'm probably not doing as good with the knife stuff because I'm really trying to not put too much pressure on it, and I'm certainly trying to not bang it in. Man, if I bang it into this stump, you might hear a grown man cry, and nobody wants to hear that. And if you do want to hear that, you're probably one of the three people that always thumb down every video before it even starts. So there you go. <laughs> Which is fine with me. You know, haters, haters got to hate, right? So anyway, let's just try this wood here, man. This is, I think this is privet, and it's horrible, to, horrible, horrible, horrible to, to feather with. Let me find something else, because that's not enough feathers. This, this, this cedar has so many knots in it. We can go ahead and carve a few more though. One thing I've learned in doing, gosh, I don't know how many hundreds of knife tests over the last few years, um, is that maybe even thousands, I don't know, is that every knife has its own personality, every edge, every edge grind style. Like this is a saber grind. Saber grind has a different personality than a, than a Scandi grind or than a, um, you know, a convex grind or a hollow grind or um, what other other grind there might be, and so typically, you know, if, if you especially when you're you're going from one different style grind to another, from a Scandi grind to a saber, or whatever, you know, it, it might take you just a little while to kind of get adjusted to using that blade and using that because the angles of which you which you have to uh, kind of put put the pressure on are a little different, you know, just slightly, and you know, they just you have to hold it a little different angle to the wood or whatever when you're carving feathers. It just it um. It makes a difference. So you notice I'm not been really doing a good job of keeping these on here either. I'm just trying to carve some small, tiny feathers that, that maybe a ferro rod will get started. So there's that. So you know we got some fat wood hanging right around the corner over there. But I want to try this with just the cedar only because it does have a really sharp spine. And we'll see if we can get fire going without the fat wood. And then we may bring out some fat wood just because why not, right? Man, this thing throws sparks like it's... Like it's Born to throw sparks. That smells so good. There it goes. It's burning now. Man, it smells so good. I don't know what it is about cedar burning, but almost as good as it's probably like my second most favorite fragrance in the world. With you know what the well, with my most is favoritest being the fat wood. So. Uh, Let's uh, go ahead and see how well she works on some fat wood. I know it's going to do fine, but we can just do some scraping here. Look at, look at that. And we'll just uh, scrape that on over into the pile and let it burn. So there you go. So that's the practical testing. But as you know, here at Survival and Purpose Worldwide Headquarters, we maintain a state-of-the-art, cutting-edge scientific knife testing facility. So we don't want to leave this one out, do we? Okay, I have found it to be more of a challenge, really, to balance test a small knife like this than a bigger one. But we're going to give it a shot. So uh, we got the balance orientation and rotation device set up over here, and uh, let's see how she does. Also, maybe a slightly larger danger of bounce back. Maybe I can try the no spin with this one. I'm not very good at that. <laughs> but it's fun. There we go.
So, trying the no spin. Okay, we're gonna call this unbalanced, and I, mean, I need to work on that no spin because I'd like to get really good at it. So anyway, that is the uh, LT Wright skeleton key. And once again, thanks to the folks at LT Wright for sending me this so I can show it to you. If you're looking for a really cool little uh, neck knife slash EDC blade that's very, very functional and can get the job done and is handcrafted in the USA, you might want to check this one out. I'll put a link in the video description below. As always, thanks for watching Survival on Purpose. I put out a brand new video every Friday and Saturday. Sometimes random videos throughout the week if you want to make sure you don't miss a single one and maybe get get notified of any special stuff that's going on for the newsletter subscribers. I'd invite you to go right down here, survivalonpurpose.com forward slash subscribe. Sign up for my weekly email newsletter. I really appreciate your support. Once again, my name's Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time.